Swamp Rebellion. Don't forget to check us out on social media and at DSRTalks.com. Uh, I guess my only bitch about it is Obama had 2,800 drone attacks in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. Nobody said a word about it, and that was without consultation of Congress. And now they're all pissed off with Trump because he just willy-nilly took it upon himself to do what he thought was best. And why, once again, would you tip off Congress knowing that you have haters in Congress that would rat and mole and tip off the other side anyway. You don't let your opponent know what you're doing. There's a bigger strategy there, though, I think. Because um, the, the art of war, right? You don't... The, the, before you fight a battle, it's already won. Right. So if you could control the situation before it even happens, you're in an advantage. Controlled chaos. So my thing on that is... Sure. The I think the severity of what happened is more than anything that Obama did though. Because of the following that he had. He had a lot of influence. Right. And that's like a power vacuum. Anytime something happens to like a dictator or something happens to like this big entity that a lot of people follow and they die it it starts a power vacuum and when that happens all these little sections start to break up into different factions that are idealist they already doing that well but it's exactly the same because obama did it too with bin laden that was the big superpower at the time. Yeah, but he had so much less pull than this guy because he wasn't a part of... But not on he was a just an extremist. Level. Not on a political level. Obama had it on the political level, which I feel is more dangerous because the political pull in that starts bigger wars, you know, because Trump doesn't have a political interest in this. All he cares about, in my opinion, is the safety of the American people. Knowing that no matter what, as long as terrorism is a relevant organization in the world, it's always going to breed more terrorists. Mm -hmm. It's always going to bring up more. So, yeah, I believe in just like every uh, so many years, we've taken out a, a, a different head of terrorism all the way back since Osama bin Laden. You know, so it's like it's necessary to do so. But now technology has just brought us to a point to where. We are getting better and better and better at finding these fuckers. We are better at rooting them out, identifying them positively, and then having to bring in unmanned arms to take them out. Trump had restraint when they took out our drones because he was like, no, nobody was harmed in this shit. You know, I feel like if Bush would have been there in office, if that would have been during Bush's time, he would have took out a full out attack of that because he was just a fucking hothead. I mean, you're probably right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, it wasn't until an American life was taken that he retaliated. Mm -hmm. Just to show we are we are bigger, we are stronger, we're going to wipe you out. Like, not just any American life, it was an American civilian contractor with a handful of military personnel. Right. Like, when you start bringing in civilians into the mix, I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to justify a civilian life over a military life whatsoever, or an American life is an American life, period. Once our own people start getting hurt on the ground, that's when we need to start taking action. Because it was an attack across to another country, right? We had a base in another country. Yeah. Yes, that happened yesterday. Iran did attack our bases over border into Iraq. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing about those military bases that, that were attacked. One of them in particular, I don't have the name of it on my screen at this moment, though, but it's so used for, from constant bombardment from any number of enemy. I don't want to... Like, unjustifiably say it's just another day in life at that particular location, but it is something that they are accustomed to and are aware of and are and they are prepared of dealing with. And thankfully, because of the readiness and, and um, preparedness of those particular bases, no American lives were killed with minimum to no injury, which is a huge plus for us. I think personally, it's not the tip of the iceberg, it's the tippy tip of the iceberg because I think Iran's playing with us to see how will we react to that particular attack that happened it's, it's uh, yesterday. A chess game. It's a chess game. Yeah, that's exactly <coughs> what it is. 
And then, it sucks because in a way that we, the American people, are going to su- suffer the consequences for the bullshit of... The scary part about yeah. that chess game, though, is is that their government there mm-hmm. cares less about the safety of their people. Correct. So they're willing to let every single one of them die for their cause. And here's the crazy thing. It wasn't until this was, keep in mind, this was an opportunist killing um, or an opportunist assassination, however you want to put it. To give you an example, back in the late 90s, President Clinton had an opportunity to take now Osama bin Laden before the events of, 90, of 9-11 even occurred. He chose, for whatever reason, not to take the shot, as they said. We had an opportunity to take out the military leader who is essentially the Princess Diana of the Arab world within the region of Iraq and throughout the rest of the Middle East, who is a known terrorist and how we, the United States, have labeled him. We took out their Princess Diana. Of course, they're going to be pissed off at us. But ironically, the thing is, is that because the U.S. had all these strict government sanctions on the country of Iran, uh, that their own people were starting to turn against the that side government. And now because of the recent killing of this general, we've now turned him into a martyr where the people are now with the government temporarily until the people wake up and see that, okay, our government's still fucking us over. So, <clears throat> riddle me are, this. Are they really mourning or are they being forced by the government to the, mourn? The, it's, it's, it's a government declared holiday for three days to mourn. And at, on, on the third day, they rose the flag, a religious flag of, so, of war. Exactly. So that means their government forces them to take three days of mourning. It's a, you, you, that's what you just said, right? Yes, it's, exactly. It's, like a, it's a rule that they have that it's a holiday uh, when someone important in their ranks die. Correct. And on top of that, all the government workers were expected to march as well, too. So that's why we don't have any accurate numbers of how many people were there during the funeral processions and so on and so forth. You can't count the people who died during it, though. It's well, like 50 of them. 50 people died during that funeral. What Weren't they trampled, though? It was though? stampeding. Yeah. yeah. That, 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 that happened, yes. What was the initial point of the strike in the first place, though? The, the strike was is that a couple of days prior, there was an attack on one, on one of our U.S. embassies there. Keep in mind, it's like the largest embassy that the there U.S. has in, in the world. At the embassy. Okay. Annoying, little buzzing bees type shit. Then we got intel that some uh, other attacks were being planned, and that's when we decided to take action. Oh, to try to stop said attacks. But Correct. It doesn't look like it. Fucked so up. we took out their leader at the airport in his car by no. drone, mm-hmm. and I th- smoked them. I mean, look, this shit happened. We, we could talk about what could have happened all day. It's right. it's more interesting to me about what's gonna happen. Yeah, from implication. There's gonna be implication because they do not care. And that's what I was trying to say. There's gonna be a power vacuum. Someone took his rank. We already know that already. Yeah, guaranteed. But it's not him. So they're going to choose a side from this point. And then, like I was saying, it's gonna break into factions. Even more than it already is, even though we funded some of them, which is really fun. Thanks, Obama. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have a nation that's so separated, they're never going to want to start a war that they can't win. You know, like no one would do that. So if you don't have a unified front to represent that one idea, you'll never have something that's going to be a full scale war. And, uh, you know, the memes of World War Three and shit, that's, it's so hot, you know. It's just sad to fucking see yeah. that shit. And that's how, yeah. I understand that's how people cope. I get it. Like, you don't understand the shit, you write a meme about it, and it's funny. Well, well kind of low-key, that's what a meme is, right? It's, it's this really disgusting it's, or it's, fucked up realization. It's crude. You know, what's going yeah. on, and everyone's just kind of like, hey, look at this fucking thing. Isn't it funny that it happened? Because mm-hmm. it's just better. It, it's easier to deal with than <clears throat> I don't know the fucking fifty something school to get shot up. Yeah, like yeah. classic bachelor frog. You know, like <laughs> leave a shit stain on the toilet bowl, piss it off later. <laughs> yeah, that was that really spoke to me. You know what I mean? I and here's the thing that really pisses me off um, in regards to the aftermath of what our president decided to do and how to decide to take action. Hollywood has also responded um, at the you know on the subject as well too. Uh, Rose McGowan, since we were talking about uh, Harvey Weinstein earlier, she's actually one of his uh, alleged victims uh, to basically kick off her career with Miramax. 
uh, then eventually in Charmed and TV Cinema. This is what she said on Twitter. On January 2nd, it was posted right before noon. All right, so here's what she says from uh, Rose McGowan's Twitter page. Dear hashtag Iran, the U.S. has disrespected your country, your flag, your people. 52% of us humbly apologize. We want peace with your nation. We are being held hostage by a terrorist regime, meaning Trump. We do not know how to escape. Please don't kill us. Hashtag Soleimani. You know how you escape? You fucking move. One. I would love to have her go there, and then they catch that bitch reading a book, and then they cut her pussy lips off. <laughs> like, literally, that's what happens, bitch. You love them so much, go live with them. You want to go live in a third world country where they still fuck goats, but it's not okay for you to read a fucking book. It's not okay for women to learn. And you, literally, you're giving them props on Twitter, and they're sitting here telling you that you're a piece of shit because you're a female. Yeah, little does she know who the man that she is defending. This man is, is responsible for creation and selling of IEDs mm-hmm. uh, to terrorist, to other terrorist organizations that have maimed, mangled, and killed our troops on the ground indiscriminately. And yet you want to apologize for his actions? Go fuck yourself. The problem with this shit is, is that when you look at it on the surface level, because that's all your brain could fucking handle, right? You're going to be like, yeah, I'm, I'm sad that we're at war. Yeah, we fucking all are. No one wants to do that. Yeah. You know, war makes a lot of money. We all know that. But it also kills people. So there's the trade-off. Nobody wants to die, at least while under your, you know, government rule. But at the same time, if you're going to look at it from the perspective of a fucking ant on the ground, then, yeah, all of it sucks. Sure. We all agree that this is not fun. No one wants to fucking go through this shit, but we are. And that's where she's getting mixed up because she's only looking at it on the level of a fucking ant. She's not looking at it as a person or a citizen of the United States. I ain't fucking yeah, around. I know some shit. Enough. I know some things. That's a, wild, man. Two. I know a, I know. A, you like, know a thing or two? I know Well, one. tell me the second thing you know. A brown star is a very different <laughs> option. We learned that from Halo. <laughs> yes, we did. Dude, if I go to the aquarium next weekend with my kid and I see your face posted up. <laughs> well, you, <laughs> you, well, you're not letting the petting tank. We got an email that we got four free tickets to go since we promoted it. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. I'm We're, down. Look how excited Phil just guys like. So you got whales? Dude, fuck. Can we smoke inside the <laughs> No aquarium? whales for, for you, bro. No. <laughs> Not at the aquarium. Dude, we're talking about the NOLA aquarium. They know whales. You, you don't want those whales. Oh, I'm sorry. Bro, they, got, uh, about, they got like three redfish, two specks, <laughs> four bass. They got the train tracks, too. Bro, you, saw the, the cat, you saw the catfish exhibit? They got a flathead that's 35 pounds. <laughs> that's that's good eating. Yeah. <laughs> You're the type of motherfucker that go fishing at the land aquarium, aren't you? I go fishing wherever the fish are, okay? I don't care if they're in a private pond. If they put fish in there, it's for good one to eat. <laughs> what are they going to say? Good of one, stop fishing in my pond. Okay, when I get my limit, I'll leave you, son of a bitch, me. I go fishing with every fish hard, okay? I don't care if they're proud of mine. If they put fish in there, it's for good one to eat. Okay, when I get my limit, I'll leave you, son of a bitch, me.